Good afternoon. Welcome to Stalls TV. My name is Bob Robinson, and today we're going to be discussing uh, team and league uniforms, how to apply them, all the things we can run into. And we never know what we're going to run into. We're applying different types of jerseys. We're going to be looking at four different major sports, we're looking at basketball, baseball, um, football, and hockey. Those are the, at least the four, one of the four of the most popular. Now there's a lot more out there as well, but we're going to be looking at those. And in order to find out what the limitations and what the problems could run into, we're going to go ahead and decorate uh, four total jerseys and uh, hopefully uh, come up with some, uh, some good solutions for you and some guidelines to help you with this. Before we get started, um, a couple things housekeeping wise. We will entertain questions of any kind as long as they pertain to this, of course. Um, and we'll do our best to answer them here on air. If it's something that we're just not able to answer specifically here, we will definitely make note of and get back to you. Um, but before we get too far into it, I really want to know who you are. And so we're going to uh, do some poll questions to find out uh, a little bit more about you and kind of how to gauge today's, today's seminar. First question. Oh, I did forget to uh, introduce who's with me. Uh, I do have uh, Karen and Courtney. Both will be helping me help facilitate. Uh, Karen will be the voice that you're hearing, and so she'll be asking the poll questions, and I'll give it to her now. So the first poll question, how long have you been in business? And we have just getting started, one to three years, four to seven years, or over seven years. All right, Bob, 25% are just getting started, 38% one to three years, 13% four to seven years, and 25% of your audience is over seven years. Awesome. 25% of you should be doing the seminar, but we'll go to the next question. What decorating methods do you offer? Embroidery, screen print, heat transfer film, print and cut, and sublimation. All right, looks like 61% do embroidery, 44% screen print, 100% heat transfer film, 39% print and cut, and 39% sublimation. Nice mixture. Next poll, are you currently decorating sports jerseys in simple yes or no? Forty-two percent yes versus fifty-eight percent no. Interesting. Next up, do you own a vinyl cutter? Yes, no, not yet, but you're considering one. Ninety percent said they already own one, and ten percent do not own one but they are considering one. Nobody does not, just not have one. Got it. All right, do you purchase pre-cut numbers or letters? Thirty-nine percent purchase pre-cuts, sixty-one percent do not purchase pre-cuts. And the last poll question we have is, did you attend Mike's class earlier today? Yes or no? All right, 15% of you did attend Mike's class and 85% did not. Okay, interesting information. Thank you so much for those to answering those poll questions. Very, very big, and, and you can see we have a very diverse audience today. Uh, people are just participating in the class, everything from getting started to been here forever as far as in this industry. 
Um, I was a little surprised based on the number that we hear the, because earlier today, we, the last question about Mike, he had actually, and you'll get a chance to see this uh, on, on Stalls TV, we do record all of these broadcasts, so that will be available here very shortly. It was about how to uh, design the artwork for, for team, team business, sports jerseys, etc. Uh, so a lot of the things that we're going to show today were actually designed uh, the same process that Mike showed earlier today, which was through CAD Works Live. Um, and just a real brief uh, introduction if you're not familiar with CAD Works Live, but CAD Works Live is an online design cloud-based uh, cloud design software full of clip art and text effects and template-driven, a lot of, lot of powerful tools within there to help you create things without being a true graphic artist. Um, and one of the real nice things is the Easy Teams feature in there. It's, it's, it's so uh, sweet and easy as far as uh, typing in uh, the entire roster with the last name, comma, the number, hitting enter, keep all the way down, do the entire roster and say, we're going to populate all of, all of our, uh, our team with the same, same effects. Eight inch number, two and a half inch name, drop shadow, uh, arch name, two color, and boom, they all happen. And you're ready to send to the cutter that way, which is very, very, even if you're a, a great, with graphics, this is going to be a nice time saver for you. So anyway, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that because that was another one you can watch uh, watch on, uh, at your leisure. Uh, but today we are going to talk about uh, actually we're going to actually decorate some jerseys. Hopefully, I get them all done. Uh, not that it takes 45 minutes to decorate four jerseys, but I'm kind of long-winded and uh, I tend to try to f uh, capture everything that that might you might have questions about. But one thing, a couple things up front that we need to know when we're uh, when we're decorating sports jerseys. Be aware, uh, if any, what the league specs are. The specifications that whoever you're decorating for, uh, what do they expect? Do they, you see, you know, we, this is our, they may be very stringent. If you're working for a very, uh, a league that's, that's been established for quite some time and they have their own uh, rules and regulations about what's allowed and what's not allowed and what the sizing should be, especially if you're working for some upper end um, Larger corporations, uh, Nike and Reebok and Adidas, you're doing some chase business, some overflow business for some of them, or it's one of their jerseys that have to follow for certain specifications. Be aware. Um, now, we'll have some nice guidelines for you. And it's really difficult to say, you know, what size number should be on a baseball jersey. Well, I know what I have always done on an adult or at least young adult type of jersey. But by the same token, you have to be careful that you don't follow those same guidelines for little six or seven year old playing you know playing little league and it, it makes me it drives me crazy to see uh, little guys with these great big numbers or by the same token this big hulking bulky 250 pound home run hitter playing for the adult softball league that's got this little two inch name and a little six inch number on his back it looks like it disappears so we're always going to want to match the uh, the design to who are who are, who are uh, what type of jersey we are decorating um, there is um, if you're working for a, a, a high school there is, uh, there are standards, and is the, uh, what is it, the, the NFHAs, N8, I can start over, I can do this, I had a lot of school, NFHS, that's the National Federation of High School uh, Uniform Rule Summary. It's online, and for you, and for you to look at, gives you the specifications per sport of what is, at least what the minimums are. Um, for example, in baseball, uh, the back number, for, again, this is high school, the back number needs to be at least eight inches. Okay, that's easy. Uh, for football, the front number needs to be eight and the back is 10. There's no give or take there, that's what they expect. Now, if I were decorating for a, a, a replica or authentic jersey for the NFL, uh, you'd be looking at 10 and 12. And on field, they're much bigger than that. If we used our specs on these guys that are like twice our size, they, those, again, those numbers would look silly. But those are the specifications and they're available to you if you're working for a high school, so make sure that you know your specifications. Uh, also know your fabric what type of material you're going to use. Uh, every jersey is going to be different. Sometimes, uh, in most cases, you're looking at a polyester. That's kind of the way things have evolved over the years. If, um, but probably the bulk of the baseball jerseys, unless you're working for a little higher end market, they're gonna be t-shirts. Uh, the little leagues, they don't have much money and they are typically just bringing in the old 50-50, 29M from jerseys and typically uh, keeping their, their offerings of letterings and numberings to black and white. And if it's a dark shirt, it gets white. And if it's a light shirt, it gets dark, it gets black lettering. Um, so know the fabric, know what you're applying to so that you can apply the proper uh, material for it. There was one question, uh, and then we're going to get busy as far as uh, decorating some jerseys. There was a question about, do, are you currently buying pre-cut numbers and letters? For those who don't have a vinyl cover, and it sounds like almost everyone does, 
uh, except for a few that were considering one, um, there's a good opportunity to just buy pre-cut pre -cut numbers, numbers that come in a pack of 10. Now, this is actually the most affordable per digit way to go. Now, these are die cut. They are, they are, la they are layered together. All this material is layered in, in, in tens, in layers of 10. And there's actually a, a cookie cutter, die cut type of machine that actually punches these, these letters out. Therefore, it's very cost effective to produce. And uh, while they're not laid out, some of the larger numbers are, lots, are very simple to, to lay out just by taking them, up, taking them apart, lay, either laying them on the jersey to start with and getting the right spacing between the two, or pre-laying them out on, on a design layout table, which we have a lot of tools for that later as well. Um, so don't forget about those. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that with letters. I would prefer that you cut your own names or purchase them pre-cut. Uh, it's going to be a lot bigger time saver for you. Anyway. All right, those are just some real quick uh, um, guidelines and, and some suggestions about how to get started in, in the team business. I'm going to get going and get started up, and we're going to start with the, uh, I'm going to go to the wide shot over here. Excuse my back. And we're going to start with a baseball jersey. Baseball is a very common very common jersey to, to produce. I've already got my designs already cut, so we're not going to go through the cutting portion of this. So I already have my team name, and I already have my back name and number combination. I love, when I have my own cutter, I love being able to pre-lay out my name and number um, all at one time. If I were to lay these out individually and try to put that name on the arc, it's totally doable. I've done it, and I've watched people do it. It is totally doable, but to reproduce this same format every time and make sure that these threes don't become E's and that uh, you know, the, the arch is exactly the same across the top and the spacing between the name and the number identical each time, it is huge for me to walk this over to the press, lay it on a shirt, press it, peel it, and be done. Now, we did uh, mention to know your fabric and use the right material for the fabric and also what the expectations are. Like how durable does this need to be? We have a lot of different media available for you, just regular CAD cut material. Uh, everything from, you know, from fashion film to sports film light to uh, premium plus to our, our flagship material uh, thermofilm. And in most cases with sports jerseys, the thermofilm is not going to be a bad choice because it is the most durable, especially when we go to football and hockey and rugby and lacrosse, the real contact type of sports, you definitely want to go with something very sturdy. You can get by on some of the lesser sports, and they're not lesser sports, but lesser contact, like in basketball or soccer or things like that. You can get with some of the thinner materials, especially in the print cut as well. But I like the thermofilm. Now, for those of you who are very critical, note, pay attention to the temperature on my machine, you're going to find that I'm not necessarily pressing thermofilm. Although they're going to look identical. You can't tell the difference here on camera. Uh, just because I had to keep the same temperature on the machine uh, for all the different types of uh, product that we're producing today. So I pretty much did everything in, uh, in fashion film or sport film light. I think today is sport film light. So they're all going at the same type of time and temperature. So that makes it easy for me. Starting with, you know, I did mention that um, the, uh, a lot of baseball jerseys typically are just T-shirts. The next step up is going to go with a, a, a two-button Henley or a v-neck. This happens to be a two-button Henley. And there are some um, concerns when you start talking about this placket that comes down here. Now, this is only two-button instead of a three-button, so I'm not worried. It's not as bad as it could be as far as getting that not making sure that that design doesn't end up on someone's belly. We want this team name on the front to be up, up, uh, up a little higher, up on the chest area. But with this, these buttons in the way, those can be a little bit of a problem. So what I'm going to do, we're going to switch over to the uh, heat press here, and I'm going to give you a view of that. Now, you're going to lose me. I'm sorry. I know it's heartbreaking, but we're going to get you on to the uh, top view of the heat press here. And we're going to load the jersey on and do some applications. We're going to start with the back. And, of course, we're threading, we're threading this on because I do have buttons on the front of this. Had I just laid this down to where I could see it, if I, let's just do this, if I lay this down where I can see everything just the way it's supposed to be, I'm not worried about working upside down, right here, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. I've got this placket and these buttons. Those are going to be a problem as far as pressure. So that's why we love threadability. I'm going to do just the back of this jersey to get away from all that, so I'm going to split it, slide it all the way onto the heat press, 
get it fairly centered. When I slide it all the way on, that just helps me make it even. It naturally keeps itself semi-straight, and I'm just going to pull it back. Always taking the collar just off the heat press. For some of you, this is just re repetition. You know how this goes. I'm going to grab the, uh, the name and number now and apply. I'm not that egotistical that I had to use my own name. It's just a nice number of characters. And I knew how to spell it. Now, in this particular design, I used 8-inch back numbers. And I think a nice average is 2.5 inch as far as the name goes. You have the flexibility, if you have your own cutter, to shrink these down proportionally if you've got a huge name that just doesn't fit. You never want any of this to extend past 14 inches. That's kind of a just the rule of heat printing when it comes to how wide a player name should be. Anything wider than that's going to start rolling around the shoulders. It's just going to look awkward. So because you are not using pre-cut letters, you are now able to uh, shrink these down proportionally. Shrinking proportionally is a really, 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 really uh, good idea. In other words, if I find a logo like this, I'm doing my back design for an adult 8-inch numbers, 2.5-inch name. I love the way that looks. That looks. Now the bat boy, who is 5 years old, wants a jersey as well. Instead of going through all that and say, okay, I'm going to do some math and say, if that was 8, maybe the numbers should be 4, I should do that. You shrink it proportionally. Those of you who are working with our programs, you've got your little square on, the, on one of the corners. You're just dragging it until it actually fits the jersey and looks right. If it looks right, it is right unless you have a certain specification, of course. I like to keep this name down just a, just a couple inches. I did stay away from these little seams here as far as uh, application goes. And it looks straight to me. And there are a lot of different other tools, which we're not going to go into today, to help keep things straight. But centering as best you can, knowing that the center of this design is here. I've got that pretty well centered on my heat press. My shirt is centered on my press as well. I'm just going to lock it down. And of course, that's set for four seconds for a preheat. So forgive me, I'm going to let it beep for a couple extra seconds. Should I have preheated? Yep. Especially with polyester. You can end up with some, some steam, some, um, some, some moisture that could be in, this, uh, in that fabric that can, that can become a, a little bit of a problem as far as adhesion goes. But, you know, I, we have actually worked with these for a little while, knowing that this, there's nothing in this particular jersey. I've, I've pre-pressed it in advance, actually. That quickly, the name and number of this particular baseball jersey is, is created. It looks sharp. Now we're going to do the front. Now there's an issue here. Remember, I'm going to show you the design. We're going to figure out how we're going to address this. One of the more common, um, one of the more common styles uh, for baseball jerseys in a lot of cases can be uh, either an arc or an arch, and there's a difference between the two, and we'll talk about those as well. Um, and also sometimes a team name with tail that has that 12 to 15 degree angle on it. I have opted for kind of a hybrid, and instead of the team name with tail, I'm going to use a, um, the same type of script, but without the tail. I think it looks pretty cool, too. It's a nice font, and it looks pretty cool. Now, if I were to drop this down to keep this totally away from here so I could actually pull this off, it's going to get a little low for me. I don't want... I always want my name to be uh, somewhere no, pretty much centered on the actual underarms right here at the armpits. That's the lowest I want it to be. A lot of cases, higher is better than lower. Uh, you'll find you know, too many times people have um, you know, belly prints. They really shouldn't be there. So you want to keep this down. Just imagine if these buttons weren't here, where would you put this design normally? You would actually probably have it up here. And that's kind of where I want to go with it. It's already got the list on. It's already got the tilt. And notice I can see my little weed box here. I left that on there, uh, so that helps me keep this straight to keep the proper angle that I had here. But because I'm going to press this, I've got these darn buttons in the way. So we're going to utilize one of the few times that I like to use a pillow is when I'm working with this type of deal. I'm actually going to spin this around, probably relay it out after I get everything on it. Insert the pillow inside. What that pillow does, it's a Teflon coated or a non-stick surface coated foam. And what happens there is when I put this inside the jersey, now it's a little bit awkward here. 
not awkward, it just takes a little extra step. I like to streamline things as much as possible, but it's necessary in this case. It allows these buttons to push down into the foam so I end up with a nice even surface throughout. What I also love about a slanted name like this is if you get a little bit crooked, who can tell? So I'm going to try to center that as best I can, getting as high as I can without actually going over the placket. And I think that's about the way I like it there. Now I don't worry about these buttons because they're going to go down here. I am going to cover this with a, uh, a cover sheet just to make sure that we don't have direct heat on top of those buttons. You never know what the melt point of some of these things are. I'm going to back the pressure down just a little bit because we have added some, uh, some additional stuff there, but most of the air pushes out. While that's pressing, I understand we may have a question. We have one question. Two questions. Karen would like to know, when decorating on the back of an item, do you start at the same location, inches down from the collar, if you're just placing a name as you would with a name and a number? Good question. Um, if I am putting numbers only and there's no name, allow for the name. Too many times people say, oh, well, we're, it's, it's all-star season. We're going to put our names on it now. A lot of cases, a lot of in the leagues, they don't put the names on it. Penn State has no names on their jerseys anywhere, and they never will, according to their uh, tradition. Who knows? I won't say never, never say never. But uh, a lot of leagues just won't pay the extra money. They don't want to individualize people. We're a team. We don't care about who's who. You're just number five. But uh, down the road, they may decide they want to add names. So always, and the number goes in the same place every time anyway. So yeah, if you're doing numbers only, you will drop them down and allowing for that three inch space, usually a couple inches down from the collar to start the name, a couple inches between the name and the number. So if you do the math, we're about five, six inches down from the top of the collar down to the top of the number. And then ultimately looking at it and saying, does it look okay? <laughs> it has to look good. If it's numbers only, you can cheat it up just a little bit so it doesn't look like it's too low, like somebody forgot the name. But for the most part, you want to, uh, um, you, you want to allow for, for a name of some sort. You have another one? One more. Mm -hmm. When slanting words, is there a preferred direction for the slant as left to right or right to left? <sighs> when printing words, can you read it again? Because I didn't quite understand. When printing slanted words, uh -huh. is there a preferred direction for the slant? I got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah, you're always going to have, as you're viewing it, not wearing it, as you're viewing it, the left side is always, gonna be, is always only going to be the low side. That's just the way it is. Because the tail is always on this end at the end, and it's going to swing down, it's going to give you that, that classic look. All right, good questions. Love them. Uh, and these are perfect because they're pertaining to everything that we're talking about. So what we've got now, I don't need this anymore, is a, is a completed jersey. Oh, you can't see me, I have to change. Sorry. And we're flipping to me. I know you missed me. Uh, we've got a completed uh, baseball jersey with a team name on the front and a name and number combination on the back. Uh, one other thing that could happen on a, on a front of a baseball jersey Sometimes, if they're really trying to be real professional looking, you'll add another front number here about four inches tall. Uh, it's always on the wearer's left or viewer's right. It's usually about four inches, and it's just down below. It's not way, way down, but it's just kind of an add-on to keep you. Yeah, and there's a lot of things you can do, too, because in a lot of cases, there'll be, there'll be patches. There'll be a league patch on the sleeve. Uh, there may be something up here on the nape of the neck, just a small little logo here that tells about the, uh, you know, the leg of the manufacturer. There's a lot of different things there. So, but baseball, pretty simple. Straightforward, doesn't have to be one color, it can be as many colors as you want, but you will see most cases people will try to keep it under budget, they're going to keep it one color because every time you add a color, you're doubling the cost of everything your material, your weeding, your masking, your, your, your pressing, everything. All right, baseball done in the books. We're going to segue to football. This is a little busier because in football, as we mentioned, according to the, uh, the uh, standards of the uh, National Federation of High School uh, Athletics, typically you're looking at, not typically, mandated 8-inch uh, front, 10-inch backs. Again, professional replicas, there's usually 10 and 12. 
usually they didn't even mention what the sleeves were um, so they can range typically between three and four inches in the pros they're four inches some of these jerseys especially some of these bat wing type of jerseys they're cut smaller so you're running out a little more out of space so you may be able to have to tuck those down a little bit but the real key is know your jersey and know what will fit don't design all of your names and numbers and put them up and then get the jerseys in and go holy crap that doesn't fit at all what are we going to do and then you got to recut or order a new jersey we have a question Tom would like to know, how do you avoid scorching on polyester shirts if you're using sport film or fashion film like you are now? It's 320 degrees for 15 seconds, mm -hmm. and that would often cause a scorch mark. It can. Uh, you can scorch uh, when it comes to polyesters. Um, most of the real true jersey materials are not as delicate as, say, what they call performance wear. Those will scorch like right now. So using a low temperature is important. So the lower temperature that the material will take, the better off you are. Um, however, you know, these always buy your jerseys, your, your, your blanks from a trusted blank supplier knowing that's for the apparel decoration. They are aware of the, of the hazards of what can happen here. So they're going to have these, these jerseys made with such materials that they're going to be able to hold up to most, most applications. Add on things that we can do. There's a thing, I don't have one with me now, but it's, it's, a, uh, it's a flexible application pad. And uh, we're gonna test Karen's arm out as she wings it over here. Oh, this is fun, we can do this. Boom, that just happened. Um, flexible application pad. This is just a silicone rubber flexible pad, it stretches. That's not as important as much of the fact that when I play this on top of the name, number, jersey, everything, it's gonna diffuse that heat so I don't get that immediate hot metal heat directly to it. Even though a paper sheet's on there, this really helps diffuse that heat. One thing to remember though, when you add one of these, add 10 seconds to your dwell time. If it says 320 for 10 seconds, do it for 320 for 20 seconds. It takes about 10 seconds for that heat to migrate through here to actually reach temperature so it actually gets melt point of your adhesive so it adheres to your jersey. Je it won't scorch, but also won't stick if you didn't press it long enough. It didn't get a chance to get the heat all the way on. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, most jerseys are pretty sturdy. Yeah, you can run into that, especially with the darker colors uh, of, of some potential scorching. We'll keep this here just in case. You never know. All right, we're going to get to business. I'm looking at the time, and if I keep going at this pace, we will not get over jerseys decorated. We're going to do this football jersey. This is from Team Worth, Teamwork Athletic. I'm checking my label to make sure that my material works. It's a bad time for that. 100% uh, polyester. I like it. We're good. So what we're going to do is we're going to add, we're going to do the, uh, the front first, just because. And I'm going to flip to top view of the heat press again. Again, I'm threading. There is a cowl, there is a seam here on almost all football jerseys where the dazzle area versus the mesh uh, are, are, are seamed together. Uh, and that is a nice indicator as to where for name and number and what you're measuring off of. Doing the front, this is perfect. A 16 by 20 fits on here nicely. This was just a large, so most sizes will fit there. If by chance you're doing, um, you know, a, a youth league, something like that, you can... Uh, you can switch down to a smaller platen. 11 by 15 works well for that. Now, the front, the team name on the front is not mandatory. It is if your customer says it is. A lot of cases, you'll get just a small, like in this particular design, we've added the Titan's name right here. Just a small little something something. Um, it could very well be, need, uh, be much larger, so you allow for that and space your numbers down accordingly. But again, I love the fact that uh, everything is laid out together in one piece. So if I get this on straight, everything's going to be straight. My spacing is right. Notice eight inch numbers, about one inch spacing between these. Uh, we did a good job as far as matching the trim color of this multicolor gray camouflage here. I actually used a, uh, a metallic silver because the customer wanted that. I don't need to cover this. I probably will just because it's a good habit to get into as far as who knows, who knows what was on this heat press earlier. So we'll go ahead and cover it. And I'm gonna change this now. Since I'm in the habit of not preheating. This way you don't have to listen to a beep so long. Locking it down. Now you'll notice 
This is a good. And this is why you preheat. One reason is um, you preheat to get rid of the moisture and wrinkles, but also you get a chance to do a dry run. And I forgot that I knocked the pressure down by putting that uh, that foam pad in there. So because pressure is important, I'm going to cook this again. Now I'm at about a five five pressure, which is where I want to be. I don't necessarily have to go for the full dwell time here, just because I have. I definitely heated up the adhesive enough. Now I just want to make sure I've got a good press. That's good for me. We're going to segue to the back. In this case, we used a, I believe I still stayed with the two and a half inch name and a 10 inch back number. Pulling that off, flipping over. Really easy to keep these straight in a line because you've got so many perpendicular lines. This is probably the most uh, noticeable, most significant line to, to utilize as far as spacing and alignment. Now, granted, not every jersey is perfectly uh, sewn, but most cases, and you'll find it with almost every fabric, there's going to be some flaws one place or another, but all within tolerance. I put about two inches between the name and the number here. If this were a real professional jersey, in some cases even a lot of uh, high school jerseys, there will be an add-on nameplate here, so this will be done separately. Uh, the reason they use a nameplate is every year that kid's name is something different because these kids graduate as long as their you know, grades are good enough. Um, so it's easy for them just to rip out, take the stitches out of that nameplate and just change the name. The number remains the same. Nobody gets, not too many kids get their jerseys retired in high school. Now I keep that name inside the dazzle portion or the top cowl of this jersey. And you normally are having the number, if there is no name, then you're starting about an inch down for the, n for the number below that, allowing for that again, just like you would in a, in a baseball jersey or any other uh, type of jersey where you're allowing for the name. But this also, this also represents if there were a nameplate on here, it would be sewn just about that area. Simple process, covering it up. The actual application becomes a little bit redundant. It's a little bit more about how the layout goes. What a good-looking heat press. Cover sheet aside. This happens to be uh, fashion film, so it peels red hot. I peel it right off immediately. Again, not what I would typically use for football. I'm using this just for demonstration purposes only. I would definitely recommend using thermofilm in this case because of the durability, what's necessary for the on-field type of uh, application. I'm back. Team name, just slightly reduced. Eight inch number, two and a half inch name, 10 inch number back. You can actually see that metallic on under those lights on the football field. It's going to look awesome. Uh, we're not done. On a football, you've got extra applications. We've got sleeves to do. Two different locations for sleeves. Most of the, again, I refer back to professionals. I refer back to professional uh, sports. Most of them are up on the shoulders. There are still a few teams left, and those of you who live in different regions will say, well, our Jets and our Cardinals and our whoever the other guys are, I forget them. They go down here on the sleeve. Well, with the shortness of these sleeves, sometimes that gets kind of a little bit problematic. I think the Bears are down there as well. But uh, so most cases up here on the cow on the shoulder, is where people will put the uh, put the, the four inch numbers. I actually reduced these down to about three because I looked at the jersey and said, you know, I just don't think, f I think four inch is gonna be oversized. There are no real specifications in the football uh, manual on that one. These are actually probably even optional, but everybody uses them. So I've reduced these down to three inch uh, or three and a half, I think they're three inch, to put on the jersey. We're gonna step over to a, a, a press that you probably wouldn't expect now let, uh, let them shoot that over to that press now. Suspense is killing me. Ah, oh, there it is. It's a cat press. What? 
there's no caps in football. Well, there's today. We're actually using the cap press to help uh, apply these shoulders. I didn't even do this. I, I didn't even try this. Sure, I hope it works. Um, first thing we want to do is you always want your numbers to be uh, either centered or slightly rolled forward onto the, onto the jersey so that they're a little bit more visible from the front as opposed to the back. But if we go to the center, uh, that works. That works just fine. Most cases, there'll be some sort of a seam or something there, and I can see the seam right here on this sleeve. Not a sleeve, sleeve seam, but an actual uh, crease. And you're going to do your best. <laughs> you, you try to center between um, this seam and the neck, but it doesn't always work because different size jerseys will be different dimensions there. So we find the average, and you say, okay, well, it looks like about an inch up from that bottom seam. Uh, is where the norm is, and so all the other jerseys will have to follow suit, so you keep consistency. Otherwise, you drive yourself crazy trying to center them. So about an inch up from that, I will pre-press slightly for this one. Again, you don't need a lot there. You just want to make sure that there's no steam pops out if it doesn't. And I'm going to go ahead and place my number. Yeah, we used a cap press. Those of you who have cap presses, you knew you could do more to, with it than just caps. That's that. And we find the other side. Utilizing that crease again. That should be a good dead giveaway. Just center it on. And using the same seam to keep everything straight. At least keep your design perpendicular to tight to that. We said about an inch. And honestly, there's not, unless you're working for some of the big boys like Nike and uh, some of the uh, more professional type corporations, no one's going to get out the ruler and tell, tell me that we were, I was off by 3 sixteenths of an inch. Had to be pretty radical. And there we go. Completed jersey. I'm going to flip, flip me back over to the wide view, if you don't mind. Completed jersey with front, back, name, sleeves, ready to go. Again, could be patches, could be a lot of different things. It's all up to, your, up to, to the league, to the team that you're, that you're uh, working with. I have two more jerseys and seven minutes. Something's going to get cheated. I think we'll skip the basketball. I'll just go over it. We won't take the time to press it. Um, what I've what I've done here is I'm going to flip you here because it seems to be the easiest place, even though we're not going to actually produce. I have taken the Bulldogs again, number 33. Love the number. Don't know why I just picked it. Um, but notice the Bulldogs here. We talked about the difference between an arc and a vertical arch. This is what I call an arch or a vertical arch. I like to use the word vertical in there because when you compare it to what we did with the basketball or the baseball jersey, which I'm going to bring over to you now, give you a chance to see them both, the classic arc that you see here was actually the letters were just aligned around an actual arc, a circular line. Here, they were aligned the same way, but in this case, every vertical line maintained at verticality. Ooh, big word. It stayed straight. It stayed up straight up and down. So what happened, the letters got distorted. So this is more of a distorted vertical arch, a cool look. This is a classic arc. Arc versus arch. Trivia, but important when you're actually ordering things and or uh, determining with your customer how they would like their designs to be. Both are acceptable. In basketball, um, the minimums were four inch, and this is high school again, can, it will change depending on the league you're in, but in this case for high school, Four inch front number, minimum, it can be bigger, and a six inch back number is a minimum. It can be larger as well. Uh, so a lot of the pro teams have just six inch back numbers and four inch front, so it's, it's not even, you know, they're not really scaled down that much. Uh, eight inch will probably be about the max. Anything bigger than that is a little overkill. Um, typically, uh, uh, an arch name on the back, although a lot of the teams these days are going with a much smaller team or player name. 
reducing the size of the font a little bit down there, even just again about two inches between name and number, keeping this up about two to three inches down from the collar. Allow some room right here, uh, and a lot of the, especially the professionals, they will put some sort of patch. Their team logo is in there, it's embroidered. If it's, uh, and of course everybody wants to be like the pros, I want to be like Mike. So uh, the, these high school teams or other leagues are going to want to duplicate that same look because everybody wants to look as professional as possible. So I won't go take the time to press those because it's exactly the same process. If you have any questions, we'll take those, but I'm going to segue into hockey. Are we good? We're good. All right, I'm just going to leave the press right there. Sorry for the lack of not seeing me, but that's okay. Hockey is a little different animal. Uh, sometimes you'll get a hockey jersey that is provided by the league or from the team or whoever you're pr providing for, and they will have a crest on the front already. What we have here today is a blank jersey. They're requiring me to provide them with the crest, the front logo. In most cases, professionally speaking, those are patches. There are sewn, embroidered type of heavy-duty patches. Something that actually almost take a puck and you would not know it. It's that, that thick. Um, this one wasn't provided. I don't have the ability to sew, but I did have the ability to print and cut. So we're gonna, we've just kind of designed the, uh, kind of modified the Stahl's logo. I hope I don't get in trouble for this one. Uh, let's put the, uh, the new Stahl Super S on the center of this about where the crest would go. Cover it and press it. Get that out of the way. Hockey again, pretty much a contact sport. So the names and numbers, all the embellishments, I would like to be something sturdier. Again, thermofilm would probably be the ideal. There's our crest. Not a bad representation of what a hockey crest would typically look like. Now we're going to go to the back. Now, hockey numbers, uh, I mentioned them earlier. I believe they say... Uh, in, f in, in high school, you're looking at about a 10-inch back number. I would have to actually double-check that. I know that uh, professionals, those are 12s. And the fonts here can actually be pretty crazy. They can tend to be um, pretty large. So we duplicated that. I may have overdone it, but don't judge me. We are, uh, we're doing this, actually going to do a two-color on this one because that's a blue and, oh, hi. What happened to me? Sorry that you were looking uh, at not my best features. We're not, uh, we seem to have lost top view. Can you override for me, give me a top there? Nope, all right, we'll just keep going anyway and I'll have to hold them up to show you when we're done. All right, anyway, this will give you an opportunity to see some of these designs. Now I already have these already pre-cut pre and ready to go. We're gonna go two color on this one, hopefully. I may not get to every aspect of it because I don't want to keep you away from making money as hopefully you're all taking time out of your production to, to view this. I'm going to go ahead and pull off. And these are just stuck together because of the natural uh, sticky carrier. I just kept them all together for this seminar. Pull them apart. You're going to see how big this font really is. It, but it's, it's about... It's about accurate when it comes to some of the professional hockey. Now the, the New Jersey Devils have the biggest font in hockey. Uh, it can be a real problem at times. We are using two color. I'm doing red on white. I'm going to lay this on top. And once we're done with each section, I'll kind of hold it up for you so you can see. This is Koval, number nine. We'll give Mike some props here. Again, typically a nameplate used for hockey, just like a lot of the professional sports are when there's a name involved. Now, in this case, because we are utilizing uh, th the fashion film, and I'm doing a two color, what are what I do with those? You know, when you're doing a two-color application, what can be one of the real big problems is when you press the first layer down for the full dwell, things shrink and get distorted. And it's tough to line up that name specifically and get that right contour. So what we're going to do is we're just going to give this a little something, something. And now it didn't have a whole lot of time to get distorted, and we're going to peel because the material itself peels red hot. I'm going to be careful just to keep my jersey right in place so it's not moving. 
so it doesn't distort. Now we're going to lay the red layer on top of that. I'm going to uh, probably skip the sleeve application. I don't recommend what I just did here, by the way. It could drive you crazy. You should really put that on a carry of source, but I had to keep these together to, to come to you. I'm going to try, I'm going to work without a net and work from the side. I never do this. And line this up as good as possible so that I keep the same contour up and down, left and right. And again, there's not a whole lot of people that are going to judge you for something being off just a uh, millimeter. As long as you see a good outline around every character, the red versus the white, I think everyone will be happy. I'm happy with that. Um, again, only a two second tack, but to give this a full application, I'm going to give it now the full 15 second dwell time. Any questions? Apparently you're all ready to start knocking out jerseys left and right, taking on leg business, killing it. It is the, the team in leg business is just kind of the, the segment of the market that just never goes away. It's just always there. There will always be people playing sports and it's part of the entertainment industry. Uh, most people uh, will, will, will pay pretty good money for, for their kids or for themselves to end up with a, a real quality uniform. And you know, schools are budgeted for that as well. Let me give you the uh, full effect here of the name and number combo. Two colors. It really, even though it doubles your cost to produce, it really opens up it as the value, the perceived value of the finished product greatly. You know, this is no longer just just a little something off the rack, but this is a really nice and to match the front design. Gave me the same color scheme as the uh, the red, white, and blue type look. The only thing that we didn't get to do, which uh, I'm probably not going to go through great detail is the sleeves. Uh, and the sleeves in this case are very obvious. Um, most cases there are dimensions where they should go, but most jerseys will give you an indication where the white, uh, white two different uh, patches stop. I've got this segment about six inches in the center here. That's exactly where my sleeves would go. And I would just center that double digit number there or a single digit right on that area. Two color application. In this case, I would probably use the same uh, cap press or a sleeve, a sleeve platen if I had one. Uh, which I do for this one. We would just roll, slide this onto the sleeve and leg platen, full full go. Any questions before we before we take off? All right. I do appreciate your time. Hopefully this has been. Oh, I didn't mention one thing. Minor detail. Hockey. There's always a chance for a C or an A to go up on the upper left shoulder here. As for the captain or the alternate. Um, they are, there will, there'll be at least one captain and usually two alternates in every hockey team, so that designates who those people are. And those typically go right here. Again, sizing be, be about the same as whatever the sleeve number is, being careful to stay uh, uh, further away from, uh, no closer to any pre-printed seam or design on the jersey, no closer than, I like to stay a half inch, no closer than quarter inch away so it doesn't look crowded. We have a question. Had some questions come in. Okay. Are all of the fonts loaded into CADWorks? All of these fonts came from CADWorks. Uh, this one, this crazy look one here, I, I picked it because it looks like a typical hockey font. There's a lot of crazy fonts in hockey. Uh, this one's called alley -oop. Uh The other ones were pretty basic. They're either going to be pro block or pro narrow or uh, varsity. Those are your standards, but a ton of different fonts in, in CADWorks. And, and that's kind of what's nice. And you don't want to get too crazy. You want to kind of stay within the norm. But if your customer wants something really edgy and it's a street hockey type of or field <laughs> hockey or any, something that's not quite as uh, traditional, they like something a little edgier and, uh, and get some, some, some cool fonts out there. So all available to you, all customizable and very easy to produce. Next question. Do you have any recommendations for places to buy team uniforms other than Sanmar? Places for team uniforms other than Sanmar, sure do. Um, and I'm not here to promote any one particular company, but what we found the best work, I, know, I mentioned that these were teamwork jerseys. Uh, they've done a great job for us for years. A lot of customers pr uh, prefer them. I think they're based out of California. Uh, do a great job uh, as far as producing a quality jersey and deliver it on time. Uh, I like Bowmark. Bowmark is another great uh, uh, affordable place to go with some nice quality, uh, quality uniforms there as well. 
Some people are going to Augusta for some of their basic type of stuff. They, I've not looked at Augusta catalog for a while, so forgive me for that. But back in the day when I was sourcing them, that would kind of be the go-to for like a, an average, average style, not maybe a professional quality, not maybe all the sizing selections of, of types of jerseys like this one. Uh, but you can find a few, some practice jerseys, uh, reversible jerseys, soccer, a little, little better there in those locations. Do we have any more? We're good. All right. Well, I thank you for your time. My time is up, and uh, I appreciate that. Hopefully, this was helpful for you. And we do, uh, we do appreciate your attendance. We appreciate your comments. So if there's anything else that you're interested in, something else you'd like to see, make sure that you comment on the, on the survey afterwards where everything that you're looking for, what would be helpful to you. We're happy to listen to you and to accommodate. All right. Thank you for your time. We'll see you next time.